paying you to, to, to do nothing. They're paying you to actually. Alrighty. Back again. Wir sind immer noch auf Lasergurken Land hier einblenden. Und wir schauen immer noch um, DEFCON 24. So you think you want to become a penetration tester? Um, also let's go. So how many of you in here think you know what a red tape is? Raise your hand. What's that exact? Okay, no, you do. Uh, I love the conjunctive means of this stuff to me. So how many of you in here think you know what a red team is? Raise your hand. Ooh. Okay, no, you do. Catchy Frage. Das war so nicht worth it, oder? Wir werden es sehen. Oh, ist das eine Fa Es ist eine Farm. Oh mein Gott. Hier gibt es nichts zu holen, es ist einfach nur eine Mobfarm. Ja, oft will er noch diesen Penetration Joke droppen, Bro. Ja, eine klassische Mobfarm. Das wäre natürlich auch ein guter Ort, um irgendwie noch Items zu verstecken. Äh. I'm going to start out with the vulnerability assessment. A lot of people, a lot of companies out there, big companies, and I'm not going to name the names, call, oh, sorry, um, call a penetration test, of, uh, call a vulnerability assessment a penetration test. You're not actually doing a penetration test unless you're trying to actively exploit vulnerabilities. If, oh my god. If you walk in with Nessus and Matt, hold this seat. Ah, da ist eine Kiste. Diese Creeper, what the fuck? Was ist hier los? Nein. Oh. Ich bin ein bisschen überfordert gerade. Muss ich sagen. Ja, ein bisschen dazu, die, die hätte jemand eine Silk Touch. Ja, eigentlich brauche ich den Krempel auch nicht. Alter, wie schnell explodiert der bitte? Bruder. Gah. Ich sehe schon. Das, das geht hier ab. Jungs. <lacht> Ich sag ja so rein, also das ist ja nicht mehr normal. Good one. I'm sorry. Um, 
Well, so they're, 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 gonna you, they're gonna treat you like an otter. They're gonna hide things from you. They're gonna do all kinds of shit. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but you really, you know, you know, you really want to take it to the next level, and so you want to keep digging until you can dig no more. For the red team, you're gonna do that same digging. You're gonna do it from outside. You're gonna do it from. Oh, da, wo war ich denn? Den Dude kenne ich bere äh, bereits, by the way. Let's talk a little bit about adaptation. Um, How many of you guys like to plan? Vielleicht war von ihm eins der Häuser hier. Das kann natürlich sein. Vielleicht sollte ich den Dude mitnehmen. How many of you guys were up here for Lost Talk when we talked on Thursday? Um, I was. You know, he talked a little bit about, he, he gave this whole speech about thinking outside the box, right? Fuck, what's my lesson? I like to talk about non-linear thinking. You can't think in a straight line. When you think this leads to this leads to this leads to this, you're never going to find everything you need to find. Oh, it's good, right? I'm not going to wait for this thing. I'm going to run it. Okay, so yeah, we're going to talk about adaptation. Your role in, you know. Oh. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, awesome. I know, I, I know that there's a very good reason that you're late. But I do that to everybody that comes in late to my talk, so. Um, Come, Sean. So, yeah, so one plus one might equal five. And the reason why is because you think it equals two, but there's three more things out here that the client hasn't told you about. So, really, it's not one plus one, it's one plus four. So, you have to learn to adapt. You have to learn to. You sit down and be like, oh, well, so I didn't think about that, so I'm going to take a step here and I'm going to shift. A lot of people call that a pivot. So, learn to adapt. Be flexible. Don't think linear. And I'm going to kind of spin things up a little, speed things up a little bit, so we're going to start running out of time. So, we all like to win. How many of you guys like to win? Again, Jesus, we're going to try that one more time. I'm trying to get people to wake up and get active because I realize it's early on a Sunday um, or late Saturday. Is it late Saturday for you? I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll let you sleep. There's a nice, comfortable spot up here. You can down on the table. Um, no, uh, we all like to win. Um, my team especially likes to win. We like to break into things and say, yes, we win. But I want to take the concept of winning out of this. Everybody needs to win. Your client needs to be as secure as possible. Your job is to come in and tell them whether they're not secure, not to come in and embarrass the participants. I'm going to get water poisoning by the way. Oh, I've got about half of that left. That's great. Thanks. Um, so, yeah. So, your job is to do a very specific Your job is to tell your client where they're weak and what they can do to improve. And so, take winning out of the, out of the equation. You know, you don't get to win. You get to help. 
You're not there to, to conquer the network. You're there to assess it. You're there to assist. You're there, you're there to assist your client in making themselves as secure as possible. Oh my God, the report. How many of you like it, right? How many of you are technical writers? Good, thank you. I'm gonna thank you right now. Um, I actually, I hate to write. I hate it. It's my least favorite thing. Um, but I do. And I've been told I'm quite good at that. Um, yeah, it's a damn good thing I'm very good at teacher. told me, you shouldn't tweet without letting her look at it first. <laughs> and he was a kidding. Um, seriously, she helped me a lot. Um, she directed my grammar a lot. Um, she has a large red pen, and I love it. Um, learn to write. Learn to write well. You're going to have to do it. Um, my last report was <laughs> what the fuck? Remember how I said that they're treating like an auditor? They don't want you to get started. Um, so your job as a penetration tester when you come into a client is to make them feel comfortable. Does this smell like chloroform? <laughs> you make them feel comfortable and then you do what you're going to do. Which is, I mean, you're going to find their weaknesses. And then when you find their weaknesses, you're going to show them how to fix them. And the more you do that, the more your client will trust you. And the less that exclusion is to go, will become a factor. Your job is to convince the client that you need to look at every single IP address on the exclusions. It's not because, again, you want to embarrass the participants. That's a bonus, remember.
Can, 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 can I provide you email evidence that we're working on that? Um, can we say that vulnerability didn't actually exist? Oh my god, manche Leute. No. Um, yeah, no. That's not how, yeah. That's not how this works. That's not how this works. I unfriend you. I got some last. Okay. They will test you. Ich brauche unbedingt einen Eimer. Ohne Eimer machst du echt nichts. Warte, war das jetzt schon der Talk? Der hat ja null Inhalt, no hate, aber... Direkt mal neun raussuchen. Oh, der hört sich interessant an. zurück, oder? Okay, ich laufe einfach gerade in die Richtung. Ich glaube, ich verbrenne mehr Hunger, als ich wieder reinkriege. Aber let's see. Das war nicht geplant. Oh, 
Sterben. Oder? Oder? Oh mein Gott, 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 oh mein Gott. Ich bin so bad. Ich äh, completely embarrassed. Ich weiß nicht, ob ein Holzschwert Sinn macht oder ob ich jetzt noch schnell Steine holen soll. Ähm, ich, ich weiß es wirklich nicht. Okay. Aber ich nehme auf jeden Fall mal dieses Schwein hier mit. Uh. Als ob auf der DEFCON Leute sind, die noch nie einen Computer angefasst haben. Ah, ja, vielleicht. Ja, doch, kann sein, ja. Aber geil. Okay. Take loss out of the processor in 10 minutes. Watch that. That was fucking phenomenal. Um, seriously, it was. Uh, and, and the secret is he did that all off the cuff. Very carefully. I'm going to repeat the question. 
how do I prepare, how do I prepare my report so it doesn't sound like an indictment against the staff? The, the, yeah. No shit, I call my wife. Um, we actually have um, a set of people that look at the reports. Oh my god, ich werde direkt wieder sterben, oder? Irgendwie. Irgendwie, ja. Ich mal switch hier talk. Ach ja, äh, für die Info für euch, wir schauen wieder DEFCON, diesmal 18, äh, kommt bei der Auna. Ähm, ja, also let's go. Oh mein Gott, der ist ein bisschen laut vielleicht. Ja, obwohl, let's go, dann halten wir den laut, dann versteht ihr vielleicht auch was im Video. Get the MIT and it's this kind of this whole kind of pulling hacks ethic, right? Like doing these pranks to amuse people. And uh, so, you know, you, you start immediately looking for things to do. And I noticed outside my lab across the street, there was a manhole that had been opened and there was some lights in it and some power cables dangling in it, like extension cords. And it sat there like that for weeks. And You know, what the hell's going on? There wasn't even, there wasn't even like um, cones around manholes that people were falling in. It just sat there and we were like, well, we don't know what's going on here, but maybe we should turn it into a hack. So we got an old GT220 terminal and decided we would set it up on the edge of the manhole with a lamp as though someone, some hacker had like popped out of the manhole and was up to no good with their GT220 hacking, you know, whatever was in the manhole. And we would film it. We set up a camera on the seventh floor of the building next door and film what was going on to see if we got any good reactions. So we go down, you know, at about 8 p.m. or something. Bring me up to Anfang vom Talk for Pass Card. And we set up Was a little desk lamp and everything and made this kind of set up. Okay, sorry, ich, ich muss nochmal zurückspulen, weil irgendwie, ich glaube, mir fehlen ein paar Kabel. Aber was, was war da für ein Problem? Was ist, was ist denn ein Manhole? Wir machen hier mal kurz einen kleinen ähm, hier Manhole. Äh, äh, wie, wie schreibt man das denn? Manhole. Manhole? Manhole. Ah. Ah. Ein Menschloch. <lacht> Oder ein, ein, ein Mannloch. Okay. Power cables dangling there, like extension cords. And it sat there like that for weeks. And. And we would film it. We'd set up a camera on the seventh floor of the building next door and film what was going on to see if we got any good reactions. So we go down, you know, at about 8 p.m. or something, 
So I came across in an ATM and we set up a BTC20 on a little desk lamp and everything and they just kind of set up. And we go back in and take the elevator up to the seventh floor to set up the video camera. And that was the fatal error because by the time we had got up to the seventh floor office to set up the video camera, the cops had already arrived and were staring at this computer, you know, wondering what was going on. And then, you know, we're looking at the cops, looking at this computer, and then suddenly, for no apparent reason, they just start kicking the shit out of it. <laughs> and one of the cops picks up the keyboard and not bam! And <laughs> what? everywhere. And we're just like, oh my god, why didn't we set up the computer? Like the video camera. You know, this, this is like Rodney King for computers right here. <laughs> So, what the fuck? Firstly, you know, always set up the video first, and secondly, we started, you know, fantasizing about what else we could have done. Imagine, so after they finished beating it up, they loaded all the broken parts into the police car and they took it off. Who <laughs> knows where? And we thought, if only we had some kind of radio transmitter hidden in that B220, so we could hear what those guys were saying. What did they think it was? Yeah, what kind of totally evil computer break-in for this man, which is probably like a sewer or a steam tunnel, could have been going on. The second lesson, recordings. Audio, video, get a radio link, because you just never know what's going to happen. Even, even, with the, even with the police, they're very unpredictable. So, okay, we're almost four minutes in, so I think I can get started. Um, you guys all read the description of the talk, so you know the basic gist. My desktop computer got stolen um, out of my place, and there's been a lot of stories lately about people who had their computer stolen or their iPhone stolen and have recovered it. So they've recovered their laptop because they clicked the iSight and they've uh, retrieved the picture of the person using it and they've got the where's my iPhone feature and stuff like that. But this is not a mobile uh, piece of equipment. Uh, it doesn't have a camera in it, so the situation is a little bit more complicated. And the circumstances of the theft, I just have to confess uh, what, what happened. It was a straightforward physical security fail. My place is on the second floor. Um, there are three blocks between, I, I rate everything in terms of zombie defense. So my keys are coded in terms of danger of zombie access. So the green key is the outside, the yellow key is the second floor, and then the red key is my, my room. But Unfortunately, we're not dealing with zombies in this case. They climbed through a second floor window via an access method that I hadn't noticed and then busted the red lock. Uh, so it's just, just had to bypass one door. Um, it's the kind of thing where it, this whole situation could have been prevented uh, with a $20 deadbolt. So that's worth keeping in mind. Uh, but the upside was uh, my Macintosh, which was a Quicksilver G4, my pride and joy, was now gone. Um, I'm the kind of person that keeps religious daily backups. Um, in fact, I kept religious daily redundant backups. Unfortunately, both of those were stored in the same room as the server and were also stolen. Ouch. Yeah, this is sad. They might have seen. Offsite backups. These days, I dumped everything onto a portable hard disk and gave it to my parents in Australia and said, I hope I never need to ask you for this back, but I might one day. Very, very traumatic to me. I lost all my music, all my photos. Oh these Bilder from the list in the talk, over 2013. <laughs> That's what the internet's for. <laughs> I have to channel that energy into trying to find my machine. I get very angry without my heavy metal. So what I did have was the serial number of the machine and exactly what machine it was. And so I started to look for it in the kind of usual places you would think someone would dispose of a machine. So I started searching eBay and Craigslist for months, and I didn't find it. <laughs> now, someone asked me almost immediately when I got stolen, if it gets plugged back into the network, will you be able to find it again? And I thought, yes. I'm running a fine DNS updater. It'll update the domain record, and I'll see it again. And then I thought a bit about it a bit more, and I thought, well, the machine is set to auto-boot into single-user mode. Okay, so my data security policy at that time could definitely have used work. And I thought, well, the guy can boot into it, but it's not going to get back on the network, because I'm pretty sure the network settings are locked, and it's on an intranet, so 
the thief is not going to be easily able to reconnect it to the network unless they happen to have an internet with the same city. Seven, as I did, unlikely. So, fuck. So even with my legendary stubbornness, I eventually gave up looking for the machine on sale sites and trying to get people to go to, I was in San Francisco filming prototypes this at the time, so I'm trying to get people in Boston to go to flea markets for me and look for it and they're telling me to fuck off as you would expect. So, all right, time passes. Now, if you, if you, if you use Dyn DNS and you use the automatic updating service, if you don't update it for a while, you start to get messages like this, which say, you have not, uh, you know, your account looks inactive. Uh, so you can either just let your account be deleted or you can click on this link and reactivate it. So I would click on these links once a month because I felt like, you know, I set it up again if I start using it again. And at some point, I noticed something. I thought, that's funny. I don't remember getting one of those emails in a while. I wonder what's up with that. So I'll log into the and see. And there I see, holy shit, two years later, that, I, that domain record has started to be updated. So quickly, Dennis looked up the IP, and uh, pretty interesting. My machine that was stolen in Boston now seems to be on a Cox.net dial-up in Las Vegas. Let's see, yes. So I called the cops right away, and they said, oh yeah, we'll subpoena that IP record. And I said, well, you got to make sure that you get a historical record for this, because this is a dial-up a dynamic IP. It's going to change a lot. It's going to be totally worthless if you look it up now. And it's not assigned to anyone, or it's assigned to someone different. And sure enough, they came back a month later with their subpoena results that said that IP address isn't registered to anyone. No shit. But I wasn't staying idle in the meantime, waiting for them. Uh, first thing I did, of course, was ping it and see if it was up, but it wasn't. So, you know, it's a dialogue, it's not always online. So let's do that thing a whole shitload all the time and wait for it to come back. And sooner or later, it did come back. Let's see if we can still SSH into that box. Fuck yeah. <laughs> nice. <coughs> oh my god. So SSH is not the only service I was running on MSG. I'm also running VMC. So let's see if that's still up. Ja. Was ist für ein geiles Setup, dass er rein ist, das Agent kann. Ohne öffentliche IP. Warte, was? Was ist mit dem Desktop? So my machine, I can still say to it, I can still be in seat to it, the machine has not been re reformatted at all, locked down, but he did le at least go to the trouble of changing my desktop background. I'll give him that. Now this is the Macintosh, so we can enter things on the command line that make it do things. Like text-to-speech that comes out of the built-in speaker with no apparent window or source. <laughs> But childish fun aside, I want that machine back. So let's start taking a look to see what we can find out about the guy that has it. So, he hasn't changed the name to my hard disk. There are some PDFs on the desktop. They look like forms for unemployment benefits in Nevada. It turns out they are unemployment forms in Nevada, but they're not filled in electronically. They've just been downloaded and probably printed out. So that's a dead end. But we have some stuff that are JPEGs. Maybe they're interesting pictures. Let's take a look. Ja, ist eine gute Idee, nochmal hier nach Tieren zu suchen wahrscheinlich. <lacht> oh mein Gott, dieses Bild. Digga, ja, ist der. Ah! So now, der sieht richtig stoned aus irgendwie. Ooh. So here's, the, here's an excerpt. So here are some sites. We've got blackfatfood.com, uh, bigfatbrazilianmoms.com, threebigassporn.com, elephantarms.com. Hey, this can you talk kind of ausdenken. All right. What about some searches? 
All right, we've got sexy, beautiful, fat ass. Got several searches for free porn. Not something I thought it was that difficult to find. All right, but we're getting a psychological profile. Now, I know some of you out there, right? You're thinking, this is my machine, these are my cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Erwischt? But, but a little bit deeper here, we find Gmail address. All right, thank you, Google, for keeping that stuff very easy to find. So what do we got? We got location in Las Vegas. We got a name. We got a face. We got a Gmail account. And we got a keylogger installed. <laughs> yeah, that's just a leader. Ja, warte mal, er ruft jetzt die Polizei, weil sein Laptop von der Polizei geklaut wurde, oder was? Da ist es bin einfach ich. <lacht> Und wenn er diese Bilder auf Online-Dating-Sites macht, dann macht er sie auf dem Keyboard. 
So my stolen computer, my beloved Mac, is being used by someone less competent than a typewriting chimp. But you know, maybe if he's stolen an infinite number of computers, we might figure out if the complete works of Shakespeare could fit in a Mac OS X file name. <laughs> but thanks to his self-portrait obsession, I hereby like present the many sexy faces of Melvin Guzman. Mein Gott, komplette Bloßstellung. Es ist ja schon Cybermobbing hier. Oh, shit. The profile seems to be very important. Wink, wink. And, and all the ladies out there, this man is available. Contact me if you would like his phone number. <laughs> now, I'm sorry to anyone who wanted to see the full Monty here, but when after I originally submitted the slides, the DEF CON staff told me that they might have trouble when they uh, put the videos of this talk um, on the uh, on the CDs that they have for sale afterwards. They might have some trouble with the AV company if I left it in. So I had to search for something to cover up uh, the wiener here, if you like. But let me just say that when I searched for DEF CON logo images on Google Images, I only had to search for icon size. Rude. <laughs> if, if you've ever wondered what photographers mean when they say make love to the camera, that's what they mean. And after making love to the camera, he doesn't mind cuddling it afterwards. But this seems to work, all right, because the sexy ladies at the internet responded, and it worked out for him. So here's what he was receiving back. So at, at last, he found the fat booty he was looking for. It, I assume so. But here's a side note on online dating techniques, right? I don't know a lot about this, but I noticed when I was looking at the keylogger that there were a lot of control Vs. <laughs> and I found out why that was from watching in DNC. This guy would write a message once and then copy and paste it to literally hundreds of women. Yeah, no what? <laughs> I think this used to be called the shotgun approach, but I don't think they make shotguns that can hit 200 targets at once. So I think maybe we need to call it the nuke from orbit approach. And finally, an interesting bit of info, uh, considering this is a guy using a stolen computer, uh, he's, he's taking an online course for criminal justice. <laughs> uh, he's enrolling in my online course for criminal justice. But armed with all the address information that I was able to give them, uh, the police were able to go and recover the computer. In fact, I think they did that the day after I submitted these DEF CON slides, uh, after the deadline. And it taught me some lessons uh, that I thought I would share with you. Um, first of all, Obviously, my security of the machine, uh, in, a, in a data security uh, sense, um, in terms of not encrypting the hard disk and letting it boot into single user mode, was shit house. But uh, that, if I had better security, then I would never have been able to recover the computer. Hmm. Um, if, the, if the guy couldn't log into it, if he had to wipe the, wipe the drives, um, if he couldn't reconnect it to the network, um, same deal. So I actually recovered awesome. the hardware and I did recover some of my data. Um, some of it had been erased, but I got a little bit of it back, and I set up R-Sync scripts every time it was online to pull in more and more of the stuff. So I often wonder if he was paying for bandwidth as well, because every time it would connect, like I'd be slurping gigabytes of stuff back down his dial up. Um, the second lesson is a lot of these services are potential vulnerabilities against a trained threat. Like everyone here is thinking, oh yeah, you know, you're running VNC, and if you're not tunneling over SSH, then you're totally making a mistake. Um, especially also having a daemon that tracks the IP address of wherever the machine moves, especially for if this was a mobile platform. You know, I'm, if I was running a DynDNS up here on my laptop, he would know where I was all the time. So that would be bad against a train threat, but very good against a low-tech threat. So it's all about sort of threat modeling and remembering to buy that $20 deadbolt. Another thing, uh, the keychain versus keylogs. I'm one of those guys that never really trusted the keychain, you know, because it's a single, single point of failure. It's got everything in it. What if you could get into it? But it's actually like a, a, an interesting defense against keyloggers, uh, which is something you're more likely to have on your machine from spyware and stuff. 
Um, there are more sophisticated key loggers. There are ones that log mouse movements and clicks and things like that. But for a very basic key logger, having forms and passwords and stuff just fill themselves in automatically when you're logged in once, um, you know, is potentially protective. Uh, and then finally, having my serial number was great. Like being able to give that to the cops, file a police report, meant that the hardware could be recovered. Without that serial number, there's no way. So put, write that down somewhere. And then the final lesson learned, of course, uh, I'm sure you all know, don't fuck with a hacker's machine. Thank you. Guter Talk, ja, das war, das war fun auf jeden Fall. Oh, wow, die Aufnahme geht schon 50 Minuten. Äh, ich mache hier mal einen Cut. Wie immer, spielen auf Lasergurken, let's go.